How you doing everybody? Matt here. Today we're going to talk soy foods that I have in my diet pretty much every single day and you should too. Um, first, before we dive into the soy foods that I like to eat, is soy okay? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, it's a great source of complete protein. Soybeans are amazing. It's actually been shown to be um, protective. At least that's kind of what the data is showing. Protective against breast cancer, prostate cancer, uh, gives you a lot of good benefits. It can actually be anti-estrogenic because it's going to block some hormonal estrogen. So um, I'll go into that much, much, much more in depth later on. But um, I've also got a friend who's got his PhD studying phytoestrogens and he eats soy all the time. And he says, yeah, it's completely fine. Eat it, use it, enjoy it. It's awesome. Um, as a plant-based athlete myself, as a vegan athlete, I, I definitely like to keep my protein up. Uh, that way I can recover from my workouts, uh, keep my muscle mass, and continue to perform at the level that I want to perform at. So, here's what we got. Uh, soy milk, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, if, you're, if you're vegan, if you're plant-based, if you just have a dairy allergy, you probably um, drink some sort of a plant-based milk or use it throughout the day. I use soy milk. Uh, this one I get from Costco. I like this for myself because it's nothing but organic soybeans and water. Okay, fantastic. The only problem with it is it's not going to be fortified with anything else. So there's no calcium, there's no vitamin D, there's no iron, there's no B12 in here. Okay, so I'm okay with that because I know that with the rest of my diet, I'm pretty dedicated with it. So I know that I'm getting in everything that I need. If your diet is subpar, you might want to look for one that's been fortified. Something more like this one. Here is a, oops, backwards, um, silk. This one, normally I like the unsweetened versions, but my kids really like this, the vanilla one. This one happens to be sweetened just because this was what I got at the store, but I give this one to my kids because it's calcium fortified primarily, okay? So this one has got uh, two and a half micrograms of vitamin D, but 450 milligrams of calcium. It's also got 1.5 micrograms of B12, so great for my kids. We talk a lot in the vegan community and especially vegan professionals. Um, I'm a holistic nutritionist myself. I do have a degree in uh, food science and human nutrition as well. We talk a lot about B12 being the one non-negotiable vitamin for vegans. We have to have a reliable source of B12 in our diets. Um, I like to add calcium fortified foods for children that are being raised vegan. Up until the age of 18, we're really laying the foundation for their bone health for the rest of their lives. Okay, so uh, calcium, we all know calcium builds bones. Vitamin D allows that calcium to be absorbed. So both of those are incredibly important. So some sort of a calcium drink is great for kids, mostly because kids are picky eaters, so they might not be eating all of the calcium rich foods that we want them to every single day. So this one's pretty easy, build smoothies out of it, put this in cereal, make oatmeal out of it, um, just drink it. My kids drink this all the time. While I'm on that one, this is not a soy, but this one is a pea protein, but if you don't wanna have the soy in there, here you go. Pea protein, this one's a chocolate milk. Yeah, it's got sugar in it, I don't care. My kids like it, it gets in their calcium, they're active, they're fine. Um, so back to our soy. One cup of this is gonna give me eight grams of protein, complete protein, I love it. I have this, I make my oatmeal with this, I put it in my smoothies, I put it in protein shakes. I don't usually drink it all by itself, but if you were used to drinking milk with dinner or milk with lunch, milk with breakfast, uh, back before going vegan or before realizing you had any kind of a dairy allergy, this can be great if you like to do that as well, okay? Every day, eight grams of protein. Um, tofu, okay, where do we be talking with, uh, get that in there. Uh, tofu. Um, talking soy, we got to be talking about tofu, right? I, I eat tofu pretty much every single day. I love tofu. Part of the reason that I love it is I'm not the best chef and I can cook this up very, very quickly. It's amazing for my non-vegan friends out there or for the rest of us who probably haven't been vegan our whole lives. This always reminds me of chicken. Chicken has no real flavor itself. It's going to take on the flavors of whatever you eat. Tofu is kind of the same way. Um, this will fit with pretty much every single dish just because you can you can season it up however you want to and it's gonna taste amazing. I always get a calcium set tofu. That way it's gonna have 
a good amount of calcium in it. Usually it's also gonna be fortified with iron and B12. It's gonna have a ton of amazing things in it. So I eat a lot of this. Edamame, okay. I pick up these. I think we usually get these at Costco, uh, grocery store. I can find these. This is just whole soybeans. These are fantastic. Microwave them up real quick. A little bit of soy sauce, sit and eat them. These make for incredible snacks because they're super fast and easy to do. And even my three-year-old likes these. He likes to get them out of the little edamame pod. So these are awesome. Another whole food that you can add in and get a ton of protein with. Like I said, I usually like to have them for snacks. Okay, finally, the last one that I have in my diet all the time is tempeh. When I first started being vegan, I'd always said that I would never eat tofu, but I knew that I wanted a good source of protein, so I started on the tofu train and actually got to where I really, really liked it very, very quickly. Um, tempeh took me a lot longer. I didn't really know how to cook it, didn't know what to do with it. I just tossed it in the pan and then I tried to put some soy sauce and stuff on it. It was super, super dry, so I didn't really like it. All right, so the secret to tempeh is to marinate it. Um, I'll put a, I'll put a, um, a good marinade that I use down in the, down in the comments. But marinate it for a half hour. When you go and cook it, it's gonna stay moist and delicious and amazing. It's okay, super, super easy. What I usually do is just quick, do up a marinade, cut it, put it in the bag, throw it in the fridge, just let it sit. The longer you let it sit, the better. At least a good half hour so that it really gets in there. Shake it up a couple of times. Then I take them out. I put them into my frying pan. Uh, no oil, doesn't really need it. I just let it cook up until it's pretty well brown on both sides. And then I take the rest of the marinade that was in there, put that back on top of there and let it just kind of caramelize in that. Absolutely incredible. And since I started doing that, I've been eating a lot more tempeh. Tempeh is great because it's, it's a whole soybean that's been fermented, which means it's a prebiotic. So probiotics, probably heard about probiotics, maybe even seen probiotic supplements. Those are, those have actually got the bacteria in them. That's good gut bacteria that's gonna help you break down food. Prebiotics, on the other hand, are fermented foods that your good gut bugs, probiotics that they like. They're gonna, they're gonna eat up on that and that's gonna help them be healthy and thrive. And so anytime you can get a sprouted or especially like a fermented like this, that's gonna have those good prebiotics in it. While I'm on that, with your soy, always shoot for organic. Soybeans are, it's a commodity crop. We use it a lot in feed for, for cattle and for chickens and for, you know, it gets used a ton. Um, it's been subsidized so that we can do it really, really cheaply. So it gets used a lot, but because most of it's used for animal feed, it's very heavily sprayed. So shoot for the organic, just that it's not so heavily sprayed. The, the organic is, I guess, thought of more to be for human consumption. So put that in, keep chasing those goals. This is gonna help you with your protein. This is gonna help you recovering from workouts. If you're on any kind of a weight loss journey, you wanna keep that protein high so that you're gonna maintain your lean muscle mass. When I'm talking about high protein, I'm not talking about a ton. I'm talking about 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. So for my American friends out there, we're usually working in pounds. Take your body weight in pounds, divide it by 2.2. That'll give you your weight in kilograms. Multiply that by 1.2. That's going to give you a good minimum floor for your protein for the day, especially if you're on a weight loss journey where your carbohydrates are going to be a little bit lower. If you're trying to put on muscle, get those carbohydrates up. The more carbohydrates you eat, the more protein you're going to spare and you're going to actually use to build your muscle. So keep going, keep chasing those fitness goals. If you've got any questions, put them down in the comments. I will get back, I will respond to those questions. Um, DM me if you need any help with anything. Otherwise, stay fit, keep chasing those goals, be vegan, and I'll talk to you soon.